I swear, I was listening to class, but I was also doodling in my notebooks. It helps. Hi, I'm Claudia Sankasa, and I graduated from Global in 2015. That was five years ago, and I was in Global for 13 years. So yeah, I was a Global student for more than half of my life. Um, so after I graduated from Global, I went to school in RISD, that's Rhode Island School of Design in Rhode Island, in Providence, Rhode Island. And then after that, I graduated again, graduated last year, and then moved to New York, which is where I am now. And I now work as an illustrator slash animator in Brooklyn. And for this video, I'm gonna show you how I work. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you not really a tutorial, but I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of my usual creative process for my illustrations. So let's get started. So now I'm gonna show you how I draw using references. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just gonna show you how I personally like to do it. So I chose a couple of images from Google. These are just like random images. I felt like I want to draw jellyfish. And so as you can see, I got a picture of a jellyfish, a house, and a bunch of plants. Um, this could be any images. Like This is also a good exercise if you don't know what to draw. Just like choose a bunch of images that, you know, inspire you or you some some pictures you like. It can be photos that you've taken or pictures you've seen in a book. It can be anything and then you put it together. So what I do first is I decide on what images I want to use, which is these three. And then I do some studies and by studies I mean just like from, from the picture itself. Just draw what it is and try to figure out what aspects of it I want to accentuate. Like for the house I just um, yeah, I, I didn't trace it. It, it. This is more like, okay, I'm drawing what I'm seeing. Uh, it really helps to, I don't know how else to say it, to try to like get a feel of like the image you want and maybe when you're drawing it, you find that you really enjoy drawing the roof and maybe the roof is like something that you want to focus on later on. Um, there's no like rule to this. I, Basically, I just I try to sketch a bit, try to draw the ha try try to draw the image, and try to maybe simplify it a bit, make it my own style. And so this was the house, and then I also did some studies for the jelly. This was really fun. The jellyfish are like so pretty, but also so scary. But anyway, for this, I start with like the more realistic. Um, illustration so I tried to draw it as it is and then after that I sort of, I started to simplify it and maybe try to figure out different ways I can incorporate it into the illustration later on and then for the plants I, I wanted to focus on the different types of plants and di different leaves so it's I didn't really like draw the entire image I just pick and choose like which parts of the image that I want to study and doodle and so after that, after like you do the studies, you've already got an image in your head of like what parts of these references that you want to take and put into an illustration. And based on that, I create several thumbnails. And for thumbnails, it's just like a really rough sketch where like you don't put too much thought into it. It's like whatever comes into your head, you just like sketch it and doodle it. Um, so in these thumbnails, I try to combine all three all three images, which is the house, the plants, and the jellies. And I came up with like a bunch of different ones. And so for this video, I'm gonna draw the final illustration. Um, yeah, well, well, before I draw, like, let me tell you a lot of the things that I know now about, or a lot of the ways I draw today is based on things I learned in Global because I gotta be honest, I don't remember much from my time in Global, but I do remember that I always enjoy art class. Like every year, the o I only look forward to the art classes. Everything else, like, forget that. I, like to me, the most memorable experience happened in art class because every year it just it just felt wrong if I didn't take an art class. Like in primary, I had Bunena, and then in secondary, I had Putina. Let me get started. But yeah, I told you that I've been in Global since reception and I've liked drawing since reception too. So it's sort of like, 
my time in global, I was already drawing. So a lot of the times in class, um, you know, I'm supposed to be taking notes, but I'm also drawing. I, I'm also listening, I swear. I was listening to class, but I was also doodling in my notebooks. It helps. Okay, so let's make a new layer. So from this thumbnail, I decided that I want to use this one. Like I prefer this one, so I'm just gonna cut that. Whoops, wrong layer. I'm gonna cut that. Still like casual doodling, trying to figure out how you want the illustration to look like. This is also a good place to figure out the composition so you don't get like too nitpicky about the smaller details but overall focus on the big picture of where you want the largest elements to be. Something I learned in Global. Yeah, you gotta think of the composition, principles of art and elements of design. I think. Or is it principles of design or elements of art? It's one of those, but either way, it's really useful. It's line, color, shapes, composition. It helps you think either way. Like there's like, it, it makes you think about like contrast and juxtaposition, everything in an image and how to make it look good. Uh, those are like, yeah, some elements that it, it's been ingrained in me that like I always think about now. Oh, I'm using Photoshop by the way. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I a lot of the times I, when I draw digitally, I use Photoshop. I've used Photoshop since God. I don't. I don't remember when was the first time I used Photoshop. Because I've used it since even before um, Year Ten. Because Year Ten was when we did the personal project, and I use Photoshop a lot for my personal project. Um, my personal project for year 10 was I made a picture book so I created my own story and then I drew it I sketched it out in paper and then I scanned it and then I made it into a book I don't know if it, it's still I don't know if anyone still has it but uh, it's called shoot for the moon maybe it's, somewhere out there some people might still have it i think uh after i finished my pp we we had the we had book week and then i sold a couple so yeah that was fun and you know i decided to do that for my personal project because i was always interested in creating stories making picture books and that's sort of like the path i am I'm in today because that's still something that I'm very much interested in doing. So who knows, maybe someday I'll make another picture book. I think my, um, my DP art, we had to choose a theme and my theme was also stories. So my interest in creating stories and art it's been there for a while, so um, so I'm really glad I took IB Art because it gave me the chance to explore a theme that I'm interested in and to create several big artworks out of it. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. It you know helped set the foundations to help me realize which area in storytelling and art that I wanted to focus in. I like to draw on different layers because I get indecisive about positioning things. So, yeah. Always draw things on different layers when you're in Photoshop. It just makes life so much easier. So, for example, I have one layer for the brown jelly thingy, and then I have another for the leaves. Now I'm gonna make another for the house. What 
I think what's also important when you're working on an illustration is to uh, think ahead of how you want the final product to be. Like, um, if you want to print it into a big poster, make sure that the file size is large enough so that like the resolution and the quality will be good when you print it. Or if you maybe want to animate it, make sure things are drawn in different layers. Either way, it's just important to think ahead about how you want to display the image afterwards. This, I also learned this in IB because for like the art exhibition, it was really important to really think about what the final product will look like, how big will it be, are you doing it digitally, are you painting it? And it helps you think about the final product along every step. Um, so yeah, for this one, I'm just thinking that I maybe I would want to animate this one day. So for that, I would need to keep things in different layers in case I want to animate them separately. So for the tentacles, I'm gonna make each tentacle in a different layer. So. I finish with the line this is where um, for me it gets hard because this is where we start to choose color and I'm, I'm very indecisive with a lot of things but color most of all because I can't decide what color looks best and so the trick that I use well it's not really a trick but what really helps me in the process of coloring an image is I try to use a limited amount of colors so I decide firsthand for like the color swatch I limit it to two to three main colors. Um, what really helps is the f um, I, I use complementary colors a lot of the times when I can't decide what colors would look good. Complementary colors always look good together. I think the key is to not spend too long there because there's like so many different combinations of colors you could go with. So now I'm like, um, I'm, I'm not letting myself spend no more time picking the color. Otherwise, it'll just take forever. So I'm gonna go with the so more of a like pinkish and green blue. So that's the theme that I'm gonna go with, and I li I'm gonna limit myself to that. It helps to have this sort of guide as you color so that you don't stray away and like because if you end up using all sorts of different colors it doesn't look cohesive in the end like it doesn't harmonize well it just becomes very jarring it's all too colorful or it, it, it just doesn't look good together
Okay, so I laid down all the colors based on the color swatch I created earlier. So I've blocked it out and it, is this a finished illustration? I don't know. Uh, it depends on like whether you're satisfied with it or not. I mean, it could be, but I'm not entirely that satisfied just yet. I like the colors, but now I feel that the line art is too jarring. I don't like it being black, so I'm gonna change the colors of the lines. I want the lines to be more subtle. So what I'm gonna do is, for example, this the line for the jelly bulb. I'm gonna create a clipping mask so I can change the color. So instead of black, I want it to be like a dark, a darker version of this pink. So there. Now it's not as bold. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of the drawing where I'm gonna change the line to sort of match more with the color that it that that the object is in. Now, I, I like it better this way, but now I kind of want to add some highlights and shadows, so we're gonna do that. Um, so light, uh, adding uh, highlights and shadows is also, um, I used to find this very challenging because I can never decide where the light is coming from, so it helps to, for example, now I'm gonna decide that the light is um, coming from here. So let's pretend that there's a sun here. So like knowing that the light is coming from there, it's gonna help guide me in adding the highlights and shadows to remember that like the highlights only on this side and the shadows on the other side. I'm, I'm gonna get rid of that later. This is just like as a visual guide. Okay, I think I'm done with this illustration. Um, so, yes, that was just like an example of how I would go about illustrating using image references. So let me bring up the 
so yeah this uh, again this was the reference that I started with and from that I did some studies like these and once I familiarized myself with the images with these images I took I combined those into these thumbnails and after I decided which thumbnails I wanted to go with I made the sketch and then after the sketch we have the final illustration so that concludes my video I hope you enjoyed it here's my illustration of this like jellyfish house plant hybrid I haven't named it yet but hopefully this will inspire some of you to maybe try it out someday just like choose a bunch of images from Google and create something out of it um, I hope this was useful for those of you who are interested in pursuing illustration or any other art related industries um, even if you aren't I hope this was one fun to watch and maybe fun to try out sometimes um, but yeah thanks for watching and if you like this illustration maybe check out some of my other work i have my website here and go check out my instagram here for other artworks and yeah i guess that's it thanks for watching bye